Hi everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Pico Developer Series for Unreal Engine. In this video, we're going to talk about improving your application's user experience by adding custom splash screens to keep your users engaged while waiting for the application to load. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of how to set up different types of splash screens in your Unreal Engine applications. So that instead of players waiting for the app to load by watching the default Pico loading circle, they can see a custom splash screen image of your choice, preparing them for the XR application to start. We'll begin by showing you how to use the auto-load splash screen by modifying the project settings and continue by sharing how blueprints can be utilized to code splash screens to your project. Besides that, you will learn how to set up multiple splash screens and finally, how to enable splash screens at an OS level to significantly decrease loading times. We'll provide instructions for Unreal Engine 4.27 but you can follow the same steps for Unreal Engine 5. So grab your Pico headset and follow along. A splash screen is a brief image that is displayed while the application is loading and initializing before the main content is presented to the user. Its primary purpose is to prevent a blank or empty screen during the loading process when your app is currently unable to render frames or it's busy doing other things. Splash screens may display a company's logo, branding or any other relevant information about the application, such as version numbers or copyright notices. In Unreal Engine Pico applications, there are three main types of splash screens. Auto load splash screens, loading splash screens, and OS splash screens. So, in this video, we're going to talk about all three. Let's start from the top with auto load splash screens. We must consider that game engines take time to initialize rendering and XR subsystems before displaying the splash screen. It's crucial not to rely on blueprint functions for the initial splash screen as they wait for the level to load sufficiently before processing. Go ahead and open your project in a real engine editor. Go to the project settings and under the plugin section, click on Pico XR settings. Scroll down to the feature section and make sure Auto Show Splash Screen is checked. This checkbox enables or disables splash screen auto loading. When auto loading is enabled, the splash screen will automatically be loaded whenever the user transitions from one level to the other. When auto loading is disabled, the splash screen is not loaded. Enabling the checkbox will enable the next sections, allowing you to select and configure the custom splash screen texture you want to use. Let's go ahead and import some images to our project. You can download these sample images from the link in the description and replace them later with your own ones for your own application. When selecting a texture to be used as a splash image, it's best to set the texture compression to user interface 2D and also make sure to enable the never stream option so that you get the highest quality version of your splash screen. Go ahead and set as the selected texture the one called splash screen underscore settings. As you can see, this field also allows you to modify the transform and size of the splash screen or apply any offsets. Let's set the desired quad size values to be 300 on both X and Y. Also, expand the splash transform field and make sure that the, at the location X is set to 400, so it's further away from the user. Note that if you use this option, you won't see splash screen unless your app is not able to render frames due to loading resources. However, you can debug and simulate how the splash screen is going to look like by adding a delay node as well as the nodes show and hide loading screen. So let's go to the blueprints, open the level blueprint, and then here search for show loading screen. Also search for hide loading screen, and then let's add a delay in between. Let's say around 8 seconds. Connect everything together. Package and run your application, and after waiting for a bit, you should be able to see the splash screen we set up. You notice that it says auto load settings since this is the one we selected in the project settings. After a few seconds, you will enter the game application. The second type of splash screen we'll talk about is the loading splash screen that can be loaded dynamically through blueprints. After your app is loaded, for example after you begin play, or when you're about to perform a level switch, you can add a custom splash screen to mask transitions, thereby enhancing the user experience. You can also do that whenever your headset loses tracking. To dynamically show this type of splash screen, you can use the Unreal Engine Blueprint function Add Loading Screen Splash and select a custom texture. In this case, we'll select splash screen underscore BP texture and set the translation to 400,0,100 and the size to 300 by 300. Make sure you also check the Clear Before Add option. 
After that, we need to call the show loading screen blueprint function. We'll also add a small delay to simulate the loading and then call clear loading screen splashes and hide the splash screen using the Unreal Engine standard node hide loading screen function. The functions add or clear, clear loading screen splashes add and remove the splash screens to and from memory. But clearing a splash screen from memory doesn't stop showing the currently displayed copy of it, as the hide loading screen is the one that does that. Finally, you need to also make sure that the auto show splash screen from the project settings is not enabled, otherwise it will override the final splash screen show. Package then run your application and you'll be able to see the new splash screen we added. One of the cool things you can do with the add loading screen splash functions is to create multiple splash screen effects as desired, perhaps using varying position, scale and rotational properties, along with multiple splash screen textures. To do this, simply uncheck clear before add in the second add loading splash screen blueprint node and chain as many of these calls together as desired. Then, when you call the show loading screen function, all of the splash screens you have loaded will be displayed. The third type of splash screen, and perhaps the most important one, is the OS splash screen. After your user clicks on your app's icon on the Pico device, the Pico system takes some time to initialize and load your app. Since version 2.15, the Pico SDK has shortened the time required for this initialization and added support for using custom images as an OS plus screen. These provide a high performance, high quality solution for faster loading times compared to traditional application driven implementations. To add an OS plus screen in your project, go to Project Settings and then find the OS plus screen field. This allows you to select the PNG file to use as the splash screen. You can control the size by increasing or decreasing the source PNG's resolution. Make sure that the imported texture does not exceed 1024 by 1024. You can check and debug if indeed the splash screen was properly configured by analyzing the Android manifest and making sure the property pvr.app.splash is set to 1. And you can also check that the image file that you selected was included in the APK assets folder if it's there with the name pico underscore splash.png. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more exciting tutorials. And follow us on Twitter to get the latest updates about the Pico SDK. Thanks for watching.